Fazil, I'm from Jurong Secondary School. I've been teaching in Jurong Secondary School for about two years, uh, teaching history and social studies. So this is one of my uh, school project with other of my uh, teammates, uh, lower secondary school, uh, lower secondary history uh, teammate. All right. So we uh, this project is basically uh, on the using of archaeological site to teach history. Okay. So let me bring to you the objectives of this today's, today's sharing okay, to inform you of the purpose and why we are building this archaeological site uh, what are the processes that we do when, use, uh, when we are using this uh, archaeological site and also <laughs> the um, how we integrate with NIEMGO right uh, so I assume most of you teach history here except for Mr. Lim <laughs> teach history alright okay so basically, this is the inspiration. When we started, we used this uh, IKEA sand pit, all right? But it was a hassle because why well, I have to bring it up fourth floor, come back down second floor, you know? And then you have to bring up the uh, sand pit and so on and so forth. So it was quite troublesome for, for me especially. And, and most of my team did not really uh, use uh, this box. So I want to pitch it out to most of the set one students throughout the whole level. So I pitched the idea to my uh, subject head. He said that why don't we use the uh, coyote fund to, or I don't know what fund was it, uh, to build a archaeological site. So he says that, okay, let's uh, post this uh, project to the principal and see what uh, the suggestion, uh, how, how the suggestion is going to uh, suffice. Okay. So in the end, we get this archaeological site, all right? So it's basically like uh, we have four pits. So in one session, we can have about 40 to 42 students. So basically in one pit, there is about 10 students. But usually, uh, there are students who are supposed to dig uh, a sign, like they will be assigned as the archaeologists. For example, if they assign the archaeologists, then they will go into the sand pit. And then the rest would be the historian or the researcher and so on and so forth. So we break the, uh, what's it called, the roles and responsibility of the students in the group. Okay? So of course, besides that, we also purchase items such as like the brushes and, and so on and so forth for them to dig, the, uh, to dig into the excavation site. Okay? So what's the purpose actually? Uh, it's actually to enhance the lower secondary students' uh, learning because they just came from primary school into secondary school and they don't really know uh, what is history. I mean, they know what is history, but they don't know the mechanics behind what is history. How, how what's it called? Um, how historians uh, create the stories from the past. Okay? And what is the link between the historians and the archaeologists? Okay? What is primary and secondary sources? So basically, it's just to enhance the learning of the students so that they know the link between uh, how the historian makes up a story. Okay? So it's also to encourage hands-on learning. Uh, basically, uh, the reason why we push this forward is because during that year, two years ago, uh, we were on the midst of uh, changing syllabus, right? And this year was the first year that we changed our lower secondary school syllabus. And it ties with the uh, historical inquiry. So basically, this, uh, uh, what's it called? This um, archaeological site is basically of, to spark curiosity and gathering evidences for the students. Okay. Not only based on books uh, or the textbook that they have, but they are supposed to find it themselves. Okay. Later I will talk to you what the I bury inside the, uh, inside the archaeological site for the students to excavate. Okay. And of course, to make uh, skills lesson fun. So what skills do I teach uh, my students when using the archaeological site? Basically, the skills such as... Uh, the basic skills, such as inference, for example. This is where we go into the exercising reasoning. Okay? So when they, get, uh, when they get an artifact, they will compare and uh, uh, do basic, uh, basic worksheets. So we have a basic worksheet, something like this. Okay? So they have an item, and then just do a description. Haven't infer yet, so they're just describing. Okay? So in our school, we have a structure of teaching 
uh, inference. For example, we ask them to find evidence first, okay, or describe the describe the item, and then make an inference. Rather than make an inference first, then uh, give the evidence. Because most of our students are weak in inference, so that's why we ask them to find the evidence. So that's what that's why is the reason why we ask them to describe the items first. Then they make the inference. Okay. Uh, and also to not at a lower level, not really reliability and usefulness. This one is uh, later on. We want to try that during the SEC two syllabus next year to teach reliability. Um, right, and also to ask students uh, to enhance or encourage students to collaborate with their peers. Okay, at first we have this idea, right? Uh, we ask them to write on paper, something like this. Then most of the time they will lose this paper. Or when they want to collaborate, there wasn't a platform for them to collaborate. So what we do is that we uh, link with NIE, right? NIE, and then we come up, uh, we learn about this thing called the NIE MGO. Have you guys know, uh, know about NIE MGO? NIE. Okay, it's just a platform whereby students uh, get an artifact, for example. Say they dig out an artifact, say they dig out a, a coin, for example. Okay, and then they use the NIM Geo to take a picture, put the description, uh, put the description on the NIM Geo, the piece of platform, then they can collaborate using the NIM Geo. Okay, uh, it's actually a paperless project. Now we use, let's say, use paper, now we use NIM Geo. Alright? Other ways, uh, for example, when students uh, excavate a coin, for example, and they want, they want to know more about this, what they can do is that we provide them with uh, QR codes. So they can use their, because our school, uh, for every class, for lower sec, they use this uh, Galaxy tab. Right? They are given a Galaxy tab each. So what happens is that they use the Galaxy tab and then just go in QR code and find more about the items that they find. Okay, or when they are doing the excavation. For example, um, okay, there's no real Singapore store in the archaeological site, right? Uh, so we, okay, this is one of the challenges that we face. Most of the items must be replicate. So we replicate most of our items. Uh, so they are not authentic. Because if they are authentic, it must be some kind of value, right? So, uh, for example, like the Singapore store, we replicate with clay, for example. Okay, and what do we put inside? How do we put inside the big... Uh, inside the big archaeological pit. So we have uh, things like this, right? So we just put like items and then uh, whatever items you want to put. So we have a lot of this. And then we close it up, right? And then we just dump inside the archaeological site, okay? Together with other items. Uh, these are the relevant ones, la, right? That we want them to find. The non-relevant one are donated by our alumni who is the owner of Tao Kuang, what was it called? The, uh, the, the pottery. Like. So he donated a lot of like the Tang Dynasty kind of artifact to the school for us to put inside the archaeological site. Okay? So the relevant one, so it actually, it actually also teach them on how to uh, excavate relevant items from the non-relevant items. Okay? And at the same time, they are also taught to uh, differentiate between a primary source and a secondary source. So, like, for example, primary source, we can, uh, for example, most of the items here, like, for example, like written notes, uh, what we do is that we would scan it right, and put inside the, the tube here and then throw inside the item inside. Because we do not want to do, this is the original one you can get from the box. So most of our items are actually from the box that is given by, by, uh, by MOE. Alright? Okay? So like I said just now, it helps to complement the lower sec uh, history syllabus. I have a uh, the fieldwork lesson skeleton. If, if you want, you can take it later. Alright? Uh, describe the, the doings that we did in school. Okay? Uh, it also, like for example, like I said, under the HI process, it helps to spark inquiry. Okay, for example, we give them uh, a HI question. And then they are supposed, not only, this is actually a platform for them to go to find evidences or gather evidences. 
there are other learning journeys like for example we go to the Fort Canning Park the National Museum to find to find evidences but this is another exa another avenue for them to find evidences right so they gather evidences and then they start doing their reasoning so just like I said just now like all these items are being thrown inside the archaeological site okay um, So, so these are the other items that were donated, like potteries, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, ornaments and stuff like that. But like I said, it's now most of the items are replicated or made up. For example, we have like items like this, right? So we just made up a story saying that oh, this is a uh, the artifact from the clay that I found from Singapore River, something like that. Okay? It's, just, it's, it's just made up. But the context is to, to let the student know about Singapore history. So what, 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 what happens is that when they dig something like this, right, and then they go into the QR code, and then they will find a whole range of ceramic bowls that was, that, that was excavated at the Singapore River. Like okay? So in the end, they would collaborate with their friends, right? Collaborate with their friends, and then they would present their uh, present their their findings to their friends. Okay. So like I said just now, the challenges that I face number one is getting resources, especially authentic resources. Okay. Uh, we have the school to order, we get seven, if not know, seven or eight sets, we ask the school to order like eight more, just for the archaeological site. Uh, other than that, we just photocopy and put inside this tumbler and throw it inside the archaeological site. Um, actually, some of uh, people email me and say, Do, is it necessary for my school to build a archaeological site. I say not really. Uh, if you have 10000 to $15,000, then maybe. Right? But most of the school do not have uh, an archaeological pit. Uh, so I suggest this would be sufficient. But the only drawback is that you have to carry it up and down the stairs if you have to go from one class to one class. Or maybe you can have a home room. Right? A home room like history home room. Or maybe you have a special room uh, for that week, for example, just to teach archaeology. Uh, so you can buy this at IKEA for $9, if not wrong. Maybe you can buy it 10 so that in, in the class, four students to uh, one sandbox. So you just put the sand and then you just bury the artifacts for them to, to excavate from here. Okay? So at the end of the day, all right, the archaeological site is actually a trigger or a, 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 to spark curiosity for students to, to have interest in history. Okay? But of course, you must teach them all the other skills, for example, like writing it, how to write inference and stuff like that, so on and so forth. Okay? It's just for them to spark, the curios to spark their curiosity so that they would find history relevant and interesting to, to, to study instead of just reading textbook and so on. Right? Uh, does our school use textbook? Yes, we do, but not to a large extent. We like to use hands-on. That's why we have the archaeological site uh, for students to to go into the uh, to to learn about history. <laughs> Any other questions? Does it take very long? Uh, to uh, for a lesson, for example. Yes, it does. Uh, but uh, it's manageable uh, in a way that. What, what I do is that uh, per lesson, maybe for the archaeological dig, we have about a total of four lessons for them to do. Yeah, four lessons, which is one hour each long. So a stretch to four lessons. Just today, no, right? Uh, no, no, not, not just today. All together, for example, uh, maybe uh, one and a half lesson we go in digging, and then one and a half lesson for them to uh, exercise reasoning. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So the, whole four, the four processes will be done? Four yeah, four lessons. Uh, based on one uh, inquiry questions. Uh, for example, like uh, I posed an uh, inquiry question, was there Singapore before 1819? So it's just a basic one, yeah. right? Not, 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 uh, not the, the whole shebang, just a basic one. For them to go, okay, go into.
the archaeological site find uh, artifact of whether there was Singapore before 1819. So they go and find it. So how did they find? They find the item and then they go and scan on the QR code to find more about the items. Yeah. Any questions? That includes the communication of findings. The within four okay, four lesson exclude. exclude. So maybe four, fifth one would be uh, easier, easier. Uh, fifth one would be the one that, that we will do the presentation. Yeah. I know you take a lot of time. Uh, we are not doing modular. We are doing a whole year. Yeah. So it's more time. There's more time to to play around actually. And considering that uh, our school do not have mid-year exam for for lower sec, we just have, only have class tests, and most of the component come from the hands-on learning. For example, when they excavate something, and then they write an article about about it. Thing that they excavate, they will give. They will, be, we will get the point for. They will get the marks for their CA from that. From that side. So it's not wasted, lah. It's not wasted. Yeah. So basically, the students just probably have one peak experience in a given year, right? Uh, so sec yep. one, they, they go through the peak. Correct. But yes, correct. Sec one, one. Sec two, two, twice. Uh, once. But then they are allowed. Uh, for example, if they want, for example, we usually uh, pitch this at the beginning of the year, right? But when towards the mid-year, when we are doing, we are starting our HI, for example, right? We would go again. Uh, so the actually the excavation site is open for students to go uh, and and dig for more information. Okay, uh, correct. But there, there are there, there's a lot of art, artifacts inside the uh, inside the buried uh, archaeological pit. So it's up to them to find whether this artifact is relevant to answer to their inquiry question. Okay. For example, we have also uh, uh, like the banana note, for example, put into a put into a box uh, into a glass like this and bury inside. So, if they are finding about Singapore before 1819, they should know whether this banana note will be relevant for them. So, there are a lot of artifacts inside there. So, it's uh, for them to sift out whether this is relevant or not. Yeah. I'm yeah. just thinking in terms of like the maintenance. Like, so, before the lesson, you put the artifacts there. So, when there's no lesson, there shouldn't be anything in the pit. No, no. The, 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 the artifact is being buried there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, do you have students going there and then take whatever? No, no, it's, it's closed. You see? Okay, let me show you the pit there. Okay. See, so this is open when they are using. So when they are not using, these are the closure to the pit. So students are not allowed. So then we have the rules and regulations here. Yeah, so these uh, wooden stuff here are to close the pit so that students will not dig into it. Uh, okay, uh, the students, obviously, they like to play sand. They are more than happy to go into the archaeological compete and, and, and learn about it. They say that it's interesting. But, obviously, we do not allow them to, we do not want them to go to the archaeological compete uh, most of the time or a lot of times, right? Because, number one, logistically, it's a lot of work. For example, like... You must manage the students, uh, uh, the, the student, and then you must manage uh, them using the tools and stuff like that. Uh, at times, they can get cut and so on and so forth. So, logistically, it's a lot of uh, dealing with student behavior at the site itself. So, usually, we would minimize the usage of the archaeological site to maybe two to three times per year, rather than allowing them to go on their own. Yes, especially the bridge between on how historians uh, get their facts from, or how they, uh, for example, like they now know the difference between an archaeologist and historian, and how does archaeologists archaeologists help them to uh, help historians to build up the story. Okay, and then they understand that historians, the story that they come from the artifact, okay, differ from different historians or differ from different perspectives. Okay, maybe for example, like this pit and this pit have the same artifact, 
but then their perception or their interpretation is different. So students are able to find out that there is different interpretation in each group of the same uh, artifact, for example. Okay? Yep. Any other questions? Actually, I'm I'm quite okay with using just this. Uh, yeah. Uh, usually, usually, usually we have our own home room la. I mean, like we will have a special room to use this. Yeah, you have to. Uh, you have to get it from somewhere la. I mean, you you can buy it actually. Yeah. You just store in the. Yeah, sure. Okay. So these are things that we also buy. Okay, if there's nothing else, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah, so okay, just, yeah, these are, you can buy.